so yeah, this so this is our automation, right? So someone gets the tag, we send them email one, wait a couple of days, send them email two, wait a couple of days, and then they get to this goal. And then you can crack open this goal. Um, what's the name of the goal? How are we going to define when the goal has been met? Someone gets the tag exists product purchase XYZ tag exists. Um, and then what do we want to do? If So once the contact's gone through all three of these emails and they still haven't bought, uh, what do we want to do with them? We want to continue anyway. Now you could wait here until the conditions are met. So they, again, they'd be waiting there forever, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Or you could just end the automation. You just might want to end it. Right? Um, but those, what that would mean if we, if we change it to end this automation, I'm uh, sorry, if we um, continue anyway, um, they'll get this next step to down here, which is our cross sell sequence as well. Okay. Um, right. So then we get our, we get our, uh, how effective that is. So what that looks like, whoops. What that looks like is imagine here's here's the goal thing in action, right? So people are coming down the automation. At some point, someone's opened the email we can see there that says send another email. That's email number three. So um, someone has opened email number two and they bought a product. So they've skipped ahead of the queue all the way down to the goal. And now they're waiting you know, a month or whatever it's going to be for the cross sell sequence, right? So um, <clears throat> it allows people to jump ahead at any point where they meet the desired criteria that the whole automation is designed to do in the first place. Um, so Al, going back to your question about <clears throat> what does it mean below the contacts position, right? So imagine you had some complex branching automation like this one, where there's a number of if else conditions in here, right? So if the contacts in Australia, we want them to go down this left-hand branch, if the contacts in Great Britain, we want them to go down this middle branch. If the contacts in the U.S., they go down this other branch. We can have multiple goals in the same automation, um, but they'll only fire if you know that below the contacts position. It'll only fire for their individual streams, right? So we've got four vertical streams in this automation. Um, the goal on the far left. Let me see if I can find this one. There we go. This goal here on the far left will is below. So that means it will only fire. It will only trigger for anyone running down that left-hand most branch. And this one will only trigger for anyone flying down this kind of center branch. And this one will only trigger anybody on the yes branch. And this one will only go click off for anybody on the no branch. Does that make sense? So what we're saying is only trigger this goal for anybody who happens to be above it, right? The goal is below their current position. So it will trigger off. So that, um, if that makes sense, Al, just give me a thumbs up and we can kind of move on from there. The, the alternate to that is that a goal can be fired from anywhere, right? So... The other setting is, you know, if we go back here, the other setting, uh, that's not it. Well, let's just jump into that one, right? So the other setting in here is, rather than saying when the goal is below the contacts position, we say when the goal is anywhere. So if the goal is anywhere, it doesn't matter what branch they're on. When they meet that goal and they meet that criteria, they'll jump straight to this point here. Right, so um, it just gives you a way to have either one major goal for the automation, which would be this kind of thing. Everybody jumps to that point, or if you wanted to make this giant Franken funnel here, um, you could have individual goals for each kind of stream of the automation or each vertical branch of the automation. Um, And there's pros and cons of of doing it that way. So the I like to break automations up into little into modular bits, right? So uh, 
on a, automation has kind of one primary goal um, where you, but you could build some people prefer to build the automations big one big thing so they can see the whole picture i prefer to have like two or three automations that work together like push buttons right this one starts when this one's done this other one starts when that one stops this other one starts so it's kind of a progression through the automations more of a kind of modular approach um, the pros and cons of each the, um, the all-in-one franken funnel that we've got on the screen now um, is easier to share. Like I can share that as a single automation and people get the whole automation, right? It's the, the cons are it's harder to figure, like six months from now when I go back to look at this automation, it's harder for me to figure out what the hell it was supposed to do in the first place because it's so complex now, right?